On the trail of the snapping turtle, now on BBC Two, Cat's Eyes. Here's a teaser, folks. What's the difference between Alf and Alf's front door? Open sesame! Oh, open up, you stupid door! Give up? Well, we'll soon find out as we ask, is it living? Uh, okay, okay, all right. I've lost the keys, but please let me in. I'll be nice to you. Talking to doors, whatever next. Does he expect the door to answer back? Even Alf must know that doors don't talk, they're just pieces of wood. Yeah, well, Alf talks to himself a lot as well. And that's a bit like talking to a piece of wood. <laughs> right, I did ask you nicely. Ah! Hi, Alf. I'd like you to meet someone. This is Herbie. Oh, no! No, Katie's at it. She's talking to a rock. What are you doing with a rock called Herbie? Ah! It's alive. That rock just grew a head and legs. It's not a rock. It's a tortoise. Oh, yes. So it is. He belongs to a friend of mine. I'm just looking after him for a bit. Hello, Herbie. Here, boy. Hey, fetch. He's a bit boring, isn't he? Not much fun as a pet. Alf, oh, don't be horrible. Well, he might as well be a rock. I mean, does he do tricks? No. He eats and breathes like all living things and walks about. <laughs> Walks about. He looks like he could do as much walking as one of my pot plants. Those plants are dead, Alf. Really? I thought they were a bit still. Have you watered them? No. Well, that's probably why they've died. Plants are living things too, Alf, and they die if you don't feed them. Suddenly I'm feeling a bit peckish. Jimmy, if plants are living things, why don't they talk or walk or eat pizza like we do? Because they haven't got any teeth, Duke, have they? Oh. It'd be useful as a paperweight. He's quite heavy. I know. I could use him to bash down my locked door. No, Alf. You'll hurt him. Herbie's alive like you and me. How would you like if I used you to break down my door? Katie, have you lost your keys as well? <sighs> a tortoise and a big round stone. They look a lot the same. But a tortoise has to eat and breathe. And he often has a name. Have you ever seen a big round stone crawl from A to B? Or nibble at a lettuce leaf when it thinks it's time for tea? If you eat and breathe, you'll move and grow, if you're a living thing. From a flower turns to face the sun to a blackbird on the wing. But plasticine just sits there, it doesn't do a lot. Some things are living and some are clearly not. A flower and a flower pot can be very close, it's true. But when it comes to growing up... The pot hasn't got a clue. If you eat and breathe, you'll move and grow, if you're a living thing. From the flower to face the sun to a blackbird on the wing. But apple pie just sits there. Oh, it doesn't do a lot. Some things are living and some are clearly not. Usually, it's easy to know when something's living, because living things have so much in common. They move, they breathe, you can see this shark breathing out. And all living things reproduce, which means they have babies, which then grow to full size. And all living things need food. Is the shark hungry? Come on. Right up. Oh, got it. Here's one, here's one. Wow. Whoa. Yes, I think we can safely say the sharks are very much alive. <laughs> but though it's usually easy to spot what's living, sometimes it's more difficult because some creatures like to pretend they're not living at all. I'm here in the swampy state of Louisiana in America and I've come to investigate an amazing story. Some people say that there are rocks in the swamp that bite. 
I was walking along this swamp the other day, and uh, I stepped on this rock, and it really bit me, and I had to go to the hospital. It was definitely a rock. I was bitten by a rock. It was definitely a rock. It just jumped out and bit me. I don't understand it. Nobody believes me. Now, only something living can bite, because only living things need food. So it can't have been a rock that bit these people. It had to be some living creature that just looked like a rock. It's the oldest trick in the book. Pretend you're a rock and sit very still, and you've more chance of catching your dinner. But these are living creatures. They breathe, they move, they have young. The question I had to answer was, which living creature was disguised as a rock in the swamps of Louisiana? My guide, Rick, thought he might just have the answer. Like a jungle. Well, we're down here at Crown Point, and uh, I think I might know what, what you're looking for. Sometimes this rock you speak of can be seen along the shoreline here. In the water? In the water. Yeah. And just take it gently yep. here. Right. And sit on this seat in the middle. Is it going to be safe? Well, in Louisiana, you never know. See when there's bubbles coming up? And then I saw it. It had a shell much like a rock, but it was moving, swimming towards the land, a sure sign of life. Well, there's something over there. Something dark and brown, and it's not moving, so maybe that's it. Oh, here's what we've been looking for. Find us. Looks like a rock, all right? It sure does. What it is, wow. is an alligator snapping turtle. This is it. Look at it. Oh. You don't often find these out of the water like this. This one must be looking for a place to lay her eggs. This is the turtle that lures fish into its mouth by rigging that little pink worm at the floor there. Uh-huh. The tongue is like a worm. Yes. Yeah. I could see why people were fooled by the snapping turtle. She even had bits of moss on her, just like a rock. But she was definitely living. Don't put your fingers too close. These things bite. They have long necks and they can snap out about 12 inches. Those jaws are pretty strong, aren't They're they? They're capable of doing a lot of damage. Right. Alf, what on earth have you done? Oh, what does it look like, Katie? I've made a hole in this stupid door. It's terrible. Does it hurt? Of course not, Katie. A door can't feel pain. It's not living, remember? Not the door. Your hand. Oh, this, yes. This is agony, actually, come to think of it, yeah. Alf, where's Herbie? Ah, uh, right here where you... Well, well, he was. He probably wandered off. Honestly, Alf, you were supposed to be looking after him. He could be anywhere. <laughs> Hardly, Katie. I think anywhere is a slight exaggeration. I mean, he's not nipped down the beach, has he, or walked to Australia. He can only move a millimetre an hour. Herbie! Herbie! Come to Alfie! Herbie! Ah! Herbie! Oh. Herbie? This... this is not Herbie. This is a stone. Well, it looks like Herbie, doesn't it? I mean, think how much easier it would be to look after. And cheaper. You wouldn't have to feed it, would you? Herbie! Uh, yeah, yeah. Herbie! Where are you? Have you ever stopped to think how similar you are to a plant or a flower? Now that may sound a funny question, but plants, just like people, are living things. And in many ways, all living things are alike. The trouble is, when you think about plants doing the things that living things are meant to do, it all seems a bit odd. Like plants having babies, or eating, or even moving. I mean, they look pretty rooted to me. So when we say that plants are living things, what exactly do we mean? To find out, I'm visiting one of the greatest collections of plants in the world, all gathered in the palm house at Kew Gardens. The palm house is like a massive greenhouse. It's bathed in sunlight, and it's just full of exotic plants, all growing close together. At 
actually the fact that plants grow is pretty important because if something grows then that's one of the signs that you're dealing with a living thing and for things that grow well you can't do better than these tropical bamboos they're really tough so tough that in some parts of the world they use them to build with but what's really amazing about these bamboos is how fast they can grow sometimes as much as a meter every single day this is a rose bush filmed with a special camera so it seems to grow before your very eyes The next thing I wanted to find out was how a plant moves. Because moving, like growing, is something done by all living things. And it didn't take long to find what I was looking for. This plant moves by closing its leaves when you touch it. In fact, though plants are rooted to the ground, they're moving all the time. Again, it just takes a special camera to see it. Right, so that's growing and moving. Next on my list, reproduction. In other words, the way that living things have babies or young of some kind. Come and take a look at this. This is a cocoa plant. And can you see that kind of orangey pod hanging off the trunk? Well, it's packed full with seeds. And when it splits open, new cocoa plants will be created. And you can see on the trunk here, these tiny little white bits. Well, these are new seed pods just springing into life. Actually, as far as I'm concerned, the more cocoa plants there are in the world, the better. Because cocoa is what chocolate's made from. Last on my list, how a plant gets its food. Now, plants don't eat like we do. Most just need water and sunlight and food from the soil. But there are some plants that are a little bit more adventurous. And this is one. It's called a pitcher plant. What it does is add to its diet by tucking into a few juicy insects. Now the insects land on the inside here. They fly in because they like the plant's sweet smell. But then they find they're stuck. So it's bye-bye insects and the plant gets a juicy snack. So there's the proof. Plants are living like you and me, as these poor insects are just finding out. It wasn't me, it was that stupid nail. It moved just as I was about to hit it. Since when have nails been able to move on their own, now? Oh, don't tell me. Nails aren't living things. I knew that. <sighs> it was nice of Katie to let us look after her tortoise. Ah, yes, Duke. But what's the tortoise tortoise? What do you mean, what's the tortoise tortoise? Exactly what I said. What's the tortoise tortoise? Uh, you're confusing me, Jimmy. Is the tortoise tortoise a sort of double-decker tortoise? No, stupid. The tortoise taught us the difference between living and non-living things. Oh, <laughs> I see what you mean. 